Thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here. Uh, after being uh, more than uh, 15 years in Tel Aviv University, to come back here as an investor as a uh, drug developer is really an um, honor for me. So I'm not going to talk with you. I'm not going to talk with you about science. I'm going to talk with you about our vision. Um, not about the nanomedicine industry in Israel because uh, it's very uh, small right now, but really about what we would like to accomplish and what we would like to be here. So when we're talking about nanomedicine, we're not talking about uh, if, we're talking about uh, when. So we know that uh, our near-term ability to structure materials, and we have heard that uh, today, at the molecular scale brings enormous and immediate benefits to the research and practice of medicine. Nanomedicine is real poised to revolutionize medical practice, bringing nanotechnologies to clinical reality and enabling clinicians to diagnose, treat, monitor diseases with the most advanced state-of-the-art materials and tools. So the nanomedicine potential is real huge. Uh, by today, more than uh, 250 nanomedicine products are already being used or tested in humans in the world. All these nanomedicine products are expected to have significant impact in medical practice. But as uh, Professor Langett said, uh, we are still in a very early stage we're still trying to understand how nanomedicine products will behave in the body, how they get eliminated, how toxic they will be. There are a lot of promises for this emerging field. We are only scratching the surface of the potential available. So what is our goal? Our goal is create interdisciplinary teams of scientists in nanotechnology to define the challenges and suggest solutions for nanomedicine. How close are scientists to achieving this world, these goals? Well, this is a very complicated question because what are the goals? What we are talking about? How, how we define them? So first we need to uh, ask ourselves, what is the medical need? And for example, in cancer, we're talking about molecular imaging. We're talking about therapy. We're talking about cancer diagnosis, about targeting, about homing the tumor. We would like to develop improved uh, imaging systems, localized therapy, and uh, eventually kill the cancer cells. So how nanomedicine can really capture the complexity of cancer? Why is cancer developed? What is the trigger? Why a cell becomes cancerous? We need to understand that. We need to understand the primary tumor growth, the stromal invasion, the different cells that are helping this process, the immune system cells, the fibroblasts, how uh, a tumor spreads, how it gets intravation into the uh, bloodstream, and then extravation to form secondary tumors or metastasis. So what is the medical need? We need to have connections and interdisciplinary teams together with clinicians to understand what is re the real need in terms of the disease itself. But then we need to ask ourselves, what is our target self? whether our cells is the cancer cell itself, is the tumor microenvironment, is the immune system that uh, are around the tumor cells, what we would like to uh, develop in this nanomedicine product. But not only the target cells, we need to understand the molecular targets. What we would like to achieve, our, our nanomedicine product would like to enhance a signaling pathway, it would like to inhibit a signaling pathway. So it's not only the nanomaterial itself, 
We need to understand the biology. We need to understand the science. We need to understand the clinic. We need to understand the development. So this is what uh, we are looking for when we as an investors are looking for a product to invest in a nanomedicine. So we know that the answer is nanotechnology, but what is the question? We need to focus the question in order for us to find an answer. So one of the question can be, how can we develop a targeted therapy? And we already heard today uh, about, um, from Professor Langer about targeted therapy, and from Danny Pierre about targeted therapy, but why targeted therapy? So targeted delivery technology can really enhance the therapeutic value of drugs, and in doing so, health companies and commercial value across all stages of the drug life cycle. The pharmaceutical industry is employing an ever increasing variety of techniques in order to gain greater control over the drug delivery process and enhance clinical outcomes through improved targetability, bioavailability, pharmacokinetics, and then patient's compliance. So eventually, targeted therapy will improve the performance of a drug itself and will improve the uh, performance of the industry. And just to mention an example that you already uh, heard from uh, Danny Pierre and you already saw uh, this slide, uh, Quiet Therapeutics, um, um, was established out of a technology, nanotechnology Gagomer that was developed in Nanotechnology Center at Tel Aviv University. Um, I will not go over the science because Danny already did, but why we invested here? B, we invested here because it has all the components. It has a nanoparticle that is targeted, that is specifically targeted to a, to a cell that is wide, um, that the um, cargo is defined and can be a um, small molecules, nucleic acid, peptide, as it, because we saw that enhance the accumulation in the tumor. And just to show you a very, very nice uh, result that has been done in the company, uh, siRNA labeled that the, I don't know how to point here, no. So you see that the siRNA uh, is inside the cell of the tumor, but in the spleen, the liver, in the lung, it's accumulating only within the blood vessels. So we see here a really a targeted therapy uh, for a cancer. So this is only one example. How this example can be the first example of uh, really establishing a uh, nanomedicine industry in Israel. So first we need to ask ourselves, why Israel? The number of Israeli nanotechnology publication and patents ranked second and third last year in the world. Nanotechnology is a natural enabler for Israel. Our small size also is our advantage. It means sharper focus, more efficient use of funds, fewer commercial obstacles, and rapid prototype and testing. Governmental funds for Israel R&D are the highest in the world relative to the uh, GDP. And the nanotechnology vision itself was set by our president about uh, uh, 10 years ago. And indeed, Israel established itself as a nanotechnology powerhouse for both basic research and multidisciplinary scientific research. The creation of six nanotechnology centers in the academia set the basis for the basic uh, piece for nano research. And since then, there has been really impressive uh, activities. Since the declaration of nanotechnology as a national priority, the field marks significant achievements. Uh, 88 world-class scientists immigrated to Israel and were accepted as a faculty, faculty members in the universities. Increasing numbers of junior scientists in the field. Um, more doctoral students, more uh, master's students. 
and impressive achievements in nanotechnology, more than 6,000 scientific papers, collaborations between universities, impressive um, uh, financials, impressive for Israel. I know that this is a small number in US, but impressive for Israel, that is invested in basic equipment and in infrastructure, and collaboration between Israeli academia, and we have also uh, success studies. But this is in nanotechnology in general. How we can translate the success in nanotechnology in general in nanomedicine products. So we really need to take advantage of the startup nation. We need to promote the development of innovative local nanomedicine industry. We need to get more substantial governmental funding. We need to have collaboration with global pharma industry. Nanomedicine and the development of nanomedicine is very, very complicated. As I said, we need to understand the need, and once we understand the need, we need to develop a product that answers these uh, needs and to be able to uh, go through all the stages of uh, development. So we need to collaborate to create interdis interdisciplinary global working teams and close co collaborations with clinicians, with biologists, with world key opinion leaders to understand really what are the medical needs and the complexity of the diseases. So the challenge is how we can do that in a small country with a limited resources. So what we need to do is really Israelis, academia, business, investors, and government leaders need to recognize nanomedicine as a key platform for ensuring Israelis continued R&D excellence in this area for decades to come, to create an engine for global leadership, to make nanomedicine the next wave of successful industry in Israel. Thank you. Thank you.